Hello again and welcome back to another one and today we have a couple of topics to cover as for starters we finally got to hear from J. Cole about his decision to fold to Kendrick Lamar just hours after he released 7 minute drill when fans saw J. Cole apologize on stage for dissing the rapper and we got to hear J. Cole's thoughts on the whole thing on the latest song Port Antonio that dropped hours ago where he revealed why he backed out of the battle and more and boy this sparked split reactions so far not just from fans but also from some hip-hop media personalities and to be fair J. Cole is also getting roasted by some fans. Today we also have more on the story we covered in the last video when it turns out Gen Z's favorite rapper based on music consumption and social data turns out to be Eminem and this looks to have shattered the worldview of some music fans on platforms like X as they struggle to believe Luminate's report and for starters we are talking about Luminate, Billboard's primary source for data so some users calling it fake is hilarious to be honest and today we have more that's come from jay-z and beyonce's team responding to Piers morgan's interview that featured jaguar wright who decided to go off on the couple and like we reported in the last video Piers morgan was asked to take it down their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact and we've therefore complied with the legal request to cut them from the original interview. However, we got to hear more from Jay-Z and Beyonce's attorney on how this happened as he cleared up some misconceptions on what actually happened. And we also have one that's led to a Joe Budden roasting session when he claimed he's got the GOAT mixtape discography in hip-hop music greater than 50 Cent and Lil Wayne's and it is not going well so far. And before we dive in, as always, if you enjoy content like this, don't back out now like J. Cole did after getting involved if you enjoy the content take it a step further hit the like button to keep it going and subscribe for more and starting out with j cole addressing why he folded on port antonio we got some standout lyrics that sums it up nicely and we'll start with this one i pulled the plug because i seen where this was about to go they wanted blood they wanted clicks to make their pockets grow and he kept going perhaps the number one segment that sparked heated debates right now I wouldn't have lost the battle, dog. I would have lost a row. I would have gained a foe. And all for what? And more on this from Cole. Jermaine is no king. If that means I gotta dig up dirt and pay the whole team of algorithm bot dudes just to sway the whole thing on social media competing for your favorite memes. And these are the lyrics that sparked the most viral conversations so far. And it is all for various reasons as fans are split on the web. For instance, hip-hop media personality Justin Hunt via the company Man took up issue with J. Cole's narrative when he rapped about how he would have gained a foe for nothing and this made its way to X from the company Man. Check out a snippet. I would have gained a foe for what? Props are some strangers that have no clue what I've been aiming for. I mean, I just don't like the consistent nature of it feeling like J. Cole takes zero responsibility for participating in the back and forth over the course of these years. J. Cole hasn't been absent for sub sending shots or sneak disses or subliminals. <laughs> like everybody was doing it. Everybody was doing this for the past 10 years. That's part of the reason why I think the moniker Big Three applies to them. Not necessarily just because they sell so many records, but they've been dancing around each other for a decade. And Cole was a part of that too. So far, he's framing this, and even before this, he consistently seems to frame this from a perspective of like, I was just kind of hanging around and all this, all this blew up around me. I didn't contribute anything to it. Let's see where this song goes. Don't get me wrong, I feel where he's coming from. He's explaining he would have, wouldn't have lost a battle, he would have lost a bro. You know, that means more. But it kind of feels like he, this is something that landed on him. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. And this sparked reactions like exactly. J. Cole has been consistently sneak dissing Kendrick Lamar in his own claim to be the number one in hip hop. Then the cherry on the top, he calls out Kendrick for a battle and is now acting like he's oblivious to why Kendrick is mad. The company man talking facts. And before we get to those in J. Cole's corner, these posts kept blowing up. J. Cole been looking crazy all year to me, apologizing to Kendrick on stage, apologizing to Drake in this song. All he had to do was stay silent. If you are above beef, truly be above it and don't speak on it. And some took it up a notch. Mixed 
messages. J. Cole wants to be the bigger man, but there's inconsistency. He claims he can outwrap anyone, then avoids beef for friendship, and now says he could have won, but didn't want to lose a bro. You can't have it both ways. That's what put him in this position. And some believe Cole is minimizing what was so important for hip hop. The Kendrick vs. Drake beef by saying all of this was for clicks. Quote, they wanted clicks to make their pockets grow, minimizes the importance of what Kendrick demonstrated in this battle and what it meant for the culture slash hip hop. Certainly, thousands of users feel some type of way by J. Cole claiming he could have won and this went viral. I have no problem with J. Cole bowing out of that beef. You don't get to come back four months later and tell me how you would have won, though shut the F up forever. And in J. Cole's corner, some have fired back with, y'all wanted J. Cole to speak on it now that he did, it is a problem. Laughing emojis, internet is funny, you can't please everyone, that's for sure. But what are your thoughts on J. Cole's take on this? Do you think he could have won if he didn't back out? Or is this you right now? My official opinion on J. Cole. Soft. Overrated. Pretty boy. A bitch. Come on, man. Come on, man. I love, I love all people. Save your thoughts for the comments. And moving on, following Luminate's report that Eminem is in fact the number one rapper when it comes to the Gen Z audience, while thousands of Gen Zers have come clean on social media, there are those on the other end stuck in disbelief. Their data is wrong. Eminem, this list is wrong automatically. But to be fair, if you've been part of the viral campaigns that claim only 45 year olds listen to M, Luminate's report was bound to sting to be honest. M being here makes it invalid. No one born after 2004 listens to M, which is good as a 99 baby. Drake should be number one though. Now remember, Luminate is Billboard's source for music data, a joint venture between Nielsen, Alpha Data, and Variety Business Intelligence. So the denial is fun to read. And we even got some trolls out here. Lies. Eminem fans are like 45 plus. Beyonce fans are all having kids. And Rihanna fans fans aren't much left and probably all about influence. Kendrick fans are barbershop employees, by the way. <laughs> But all in all, this sums it up nicely. Eminem is for every generation. He's got fans from Gen Alpha to Boomers for real. I mean, the London pop-up months ago was a good showcase of that generational fanbase. And moving on, Joe Budden is out here catching some heat for a bold claim he made on his podcast. And Joe Budden was repeatedly asked about the rapper who's got the greatest mixtape discography. And this was how it went. Check out a snippet from the Joe Budden podcast. Who who has the greatest mixtape discography? Oh, that's easy. Me. Cool, cool. Me. Rap rappers. Me. Not not DJs. Rap. Joe, Fifty. Joe, Joe Budden. I'm going with Fifty. Yeah, I said Joe Budden. Fifty's up there. I'm going with Fifty. I gotta say Wayne. Whoa. I I, I gotta put Wayne in there. I, I don't even no. know how we don't acknowledge. I don't Wayne. put Wayne in there. Really? No. He has. See, Wayne got a lot of music. Classic, but a lot of misses. Wayne's, pro Wayne's problem is Wayne's problem is he put out too much music. Like that that oh, that's what always disqualifies. When I can see you saying that about Gucci. He's another one. But not I would Wayne. never put Wayne. I would, Wayne. Gucci has way too many mixtapes. Let me ask projects. If Wayne got how many do you think? If you just had to guess, he got at least fifteen. It's more than that. That's so, why I said so, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's just call it fifteen. How many? All are, of those are not. I'm, how many are? What's the ratio? You know yeah. who might have one? Jeezy. Great mixtape catalog? Max. You don't <laughs> fuck with Max? Uh, I do, but back to your question. Out of the 15, I might give Wayne five, six that are up there. I ain't mad at that. But again, you look at the classics and you go to these tapes and you forget everything else. But if we talk in your discography, we got to count everything else, too. I'm going with 50. I got Joe up there. I got Fab Joe up there. there but you up. said, though, who has the best um, one? I ain't thinking about 50. I'm not going to hold you. Joe and 50 probably would be my, at the top of mine. Yeah. Joe up there. You Fab, think you got the best one? Fab is up there. Fab is up I mean, there. I've said me 90 times. Really. Fab is up but there. But that could be your ego. I'm trying. Oh, well, then that's how I'm answering. All right. Without your ego. With my ego. I mean, excluding that, I mean, let's see. I'd, I'd probably go with 
It's me, it's 50, it's Fab, it's Kiss, it's Wayne. Kiss too. Jeezy is six for me, he's in there, but that's that's the squad if we talk mixtapes. I don't really acknowledge nobody else's mixtape run. It's just them people. I know Gucci had one. That's not my bag. It's just too many, and they all wasn't. When we talk in discography, like, Gucci might have 50 mixtapes. He do. No exaggeration. I, I think I have 50 at the top of that. Yeah, it might be. I might put 51. I got 50 at the top Sorry, of that. And boy, this went viral. We finally got it. The worst hip hop take of all time. And more on this note, y'all know I can't stand Lil Wayne. But Joe Budden has to be popping pills again. Forever saying he has the better mixtape discography between the two. Everybody on the podcast with him are yes men for not checking him on that. And some users sound irritated by this. Joe Budden said he's got the best mixtape discography. And this dumb bum dude, Ice, says Wayne isn't up there. Man, throw this freaking podcast away. Bunch of dumb dudes and a pass around with a mic. Skull emoji. But do you agree with Joe Budden? And moving on, we got an update from Jay-Z and Beyonce's attorney. An update on what happened with the Piers Morgan interview with Jaguar Wright. And check out a snippet from TMZ. Listen, there's rumors and then there's nonsense. And this is one step further, right? This is appointed and formal accusation of something and I felt it needed to be responded to. So uh, I think somebody reported it was a cease and desist. It, it wasn't that, it was quite bluntly an ultimatum, which is remove that false accusation that's demonstrably false or a court's going to order you to. And so I think he made the wise choice and acted accordingly, removing it and apologizing. What changed here in my mind is that somebody on a so-called journalistic platform exploited that kind of random rumor mill whether it's disconnected from reality or what have you, and lifted it up. And by doing that, they not only caused harm here, but they are also droning out the voices of real victims. And by doing that to get clicks, it didn't just harm the Carters. What he did effectively was to drone out the voices of, of actual victims in an, an ongoing case, in an ongoing investigation. And that was too much for me. What I am here to say is that in a situation as serious as this, as somebody who puts themselves out as a journalist should not effectively take advantage of the situation and exploit somebody in this way. So that's that's the real reason for action. As to the Carters, you know, I can tell you that when they put their foot down on something as they did here, they are sending a message. And if they can't stand up and, and make sure right from wrong, then who can? I have always believed that the truth will come out in courtrooms and I'm sure the truth will come out. And while some are still asking, why not sue Jaguar for defamation? I mean, it seems like they just don't want the alleged false allegations to be publicized on a broad platform. So far, I'd have to agree with this because she's been talking for years. But as soon as it hit Pierce Morgan's show, now they respond. And boy, some took it further and brought race into it. White people opinion is all the Carters care about laughing emoji. And some users are even coming for the lawyer in question. Imagine being a lawyer who defends PDF. How do you sleep at night? Sounds like there are still thousands who really believe Jaguar Wright's claims and sooner or later they'll have to do something about this. But over to you guys. Share your thoughts below. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.